It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. It's Expresso on S3. Now, earlier we spoke to the board members of what you can expect at this year's Two Oceans Marathon that's taking place this coming Saturday. Now we're about to chat to biokineticist Caitlin Miles to learn valuable tips on how to prepare ahead of the full or the half marathon, depending on which one you are doing. Caitlin, it's great to have you here. Lovely to be here. It's a big week for the runners because now they are prepping they've done all the work they've needed to do Saturday is the big day a few days away but perhaps you can share some tips on how they can you know leading up to the week of race day prep their body whether it is through stretches or, or to shorter warm-ups how can they best be prepared come race day on Saturday yeah so there's um Obviously, leading up to the race, you want to be preparing from about a week out. So it's not only what can I do on race day, but you kind of want to separate it to, okay, um, a week out leading up to that event and then prepping um, the morning of and obviously getting excited for the race. So um, you want to make sure that you are not doing too little, um, but also not doing too much. So you need to find that sort of sweet spot between um, too much activity and too little. Obviously you're in your taper week leading up to the race, but I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is doing absolutely nothing. Okay. So <laughs> you shouldn't be sitting on your couch and doing absolutely nothing. You wanna still keep moving. Um, it's okay to go for um, you know a 15 to 20 minute um, slow run the day before to keep the legs moving, keep them active. And then doing things like activation of glutes, hamstrings, quads, hip flexors, calves, etc. All the things that you that you would have been doing. But very important that you don't do anything new. Okay. It's not the time to surprise your body <laughs> before race day. So um, yeah, so leading up to race day, not doing too much, not doing too little, finding that sweet spot. And then, um, you know, the night before, making sure that you are stretching, keeping mobile, um, doing some mobility exercises, etc. And then the morning of, you can do the same thing. So another mistake that people make is um, not warming up properly. Mm. And that's when you either are not fully prepared to start the race or, um, you know, later on in the race, your body won't be getting you through to the finish line so warming up properly the day before uh, the morning of the race is also important and, and it's going to be chilly it's going to be cold it's going to be an early start to yeah. the day so you want to make sure you are warmed up properly absolutely now when it comes to food i always joke and say oh we're going to carbo load the night before but <laughs> yeah. when is the ideal time to really up your carbs ahead of race day yeah, so anything from five to seven days before the race is actually when you want to start um, carbo loading, to, so to speak. But it's more about increasing your carbohydrate intake, your protein intake, and really um, taking up those stores um, in the body to prepare it for movement. It's no small feat what you're about to do. It's so exciting, but your body is going to do the most on that day. So you need to make sure that you are um, stocking up on those reserves so that your body can use that fuel on race day um, to then get you through, the, through to the finish line. So um, yeah, so about five to seven days out is when you wanna start um, increasing your carbohydrate and protein intake. Um, obviously, again, not doing too much and don't do anything that you haven't done before. So yeah. if your body is not used to eating a whole plate of pasta, then don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be um, good for you on race day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> that is the key. Don't do anything new. Exactly. If you are used to eating your thing in the morning ahead of your long run, stick to what you know and works for you. Now, I know a lot of runners in my life yes. and sometimes <laughs> they are so excited they start too strong or they don't pace themselves what are perhaps some of those key mistakes runners can do especially if they're about to take on that mammoth task of running 56 kilometers or even doing the half running 21 kilometers yeah so i think um the mistakes happen from the night before race okay. day so <laughs> Make sure that you have everything prepped out the, the night before. You've laid everything out. You've taken your picture for Instagram, whatever it is to get you've you excited. You've your race number to your shirt. Race number. Exactly. You don't want to leave anything for the morning of because you want to wake up feeling prepared, feeling excited, having that nervous energy, but not panic energy. So 
um, prep everything the night before. That includes all your nutrition. So whatever gels or etc. that you're using, nothing new, but whatever you've trained to do. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, during the race, you don't want to um, go out too fast, but I think it comes down to planning. So if you don't plan, then you're planning to fail, essentially, as the old saying goes. So make sure that you have planned for your pacing strategy. You know where the hills are. You know what to expect. You know where the water points are so that you can fuel correctly en route. Um, so it all really comes down to preparation for the race. Um, and then, yeah, listening to your body is, is a very important one. So if sometimes things go wrong that are out of your control, and if your body says, mm -mm, not today, then listen to it. Um, so adjusting your pacing strategy as you go throughout the race and listening to your body. And then, yeah, I think the main thing is just to have fun, hey? And enjoy there's, it. It's yeah. one of the most beautiful runs you'll do. Yeah, there's oh. nothing you can do on race day that you haven't already prepped for so yeah. there's nothing new that's going to happen so if you just go out there zero worries enjoy it have fun take some photos if you can then yeah that'll be yeah okay and, and i mean i remember doing my first ever race and i think if it is your first time mm. you know do it to complete not to compete for a specific time see how your body adjusts if, especially if you're tackling exactly. the 56 for the very first time but caitlin thank you for joining us today it's i believe this is not the that. end for you because <laughs> we've got a little bit of a fitness routine that we're going to throw caitlin in with the guys